Thanks for joining me today. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I really like photographing panoramas and I've done quite a few panoramic tutorials on how to photograph panoramas, how to edit panoramas. And the last video that I did was panoramic photography, I should have known better. I got a few comments, not so much related to that video, but a few comments said, well, Charles, you've showed us how to photograph a panorama, how to stitch a panorama. And they said, but when we've gone to stitch a panorama, we notice on the menu that it shows all different types of perspectives of how to stitch a panorama. Which one is best? Which one should I choose? This is something that I should have addressed a long time ago because when you stitch a panorama, the perspective that you choose greatly affects how your panorama will stitch. It depends on the scene that you're photographing, whether you're photographing in landscape orientation, whether you're photographing a vertical panorama, whether you're using just a standard lens like the Nikon 24 to 85 mil, or whether you're using an ultra wide lens like this Astri 16 mil ultra wide angle f1.8. Today, I'm going to show you how perspective affects the way that you stitch a panorama. Because when you stitch a panorama, you really want to make it look lifelike, the way that the scene looked like in your eyes. Because I've noticed on social media that some of the panoramas have been stitched with the wrong perspective, especially when it comes to photographing the Milky Way. Because I've seen quite a few Milky Way panoramas that have been displayed that have had the wrong perspective apply. It just arcs over our sky. And the way that you stitch it should resemble that we're using ultra wide angle lenses most of the time. Let me show you now the panoramas that we're going to stitch. We're not going to be editing them. I'll show you what the panorama looked like when it was stitched, edited and displayed on social media. The photos that I required to do that and then I will show you how each image was stitched. Now the program that I'm using is Microsoft Ice Image Compositor Editor and I will put a link in the description of where you can download this program because this is a free to use program. It has been discontinued by Microsoft, but you can still download it at the link below. Now I rarely use this program. I use PT GUI Pro. This is an expensive program and some people might not have that program. I decide to use free software so that you can try it and you can see how perspective when you're stitching a panorama affects the finished panorama. Let's dive into it. So this is the first panorama here. It was taken at sunset a few years ago at Lake Eden and these clouds were just arcing across the sky. Just looked beautiful. These are the images that are used. There are 15 images here. I apologize this video is going to be a bit longer than my normal videos because I feel that I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't show you the different ways that you can blend a panorama in software. Just open up Microsoft Image Composite Editor or ICE for short. We just click on New Panorama from Images. I'm going to choose the images from Lake Eden. Click Open. It's opened up all the images. It is just a simple panorama. We go to the top right, we click Next and it's just going to align all the images now. Now the speed that it aligns the images depends on the complexity of the photos and also how quick your computer is or your laptop is. There we go. I use a PC with a mouse and you can see if I just scroll with the mouse, I can bring it in or bring it out. This will not affect when you crop. This is just to help you see your panorama and also if your horizon isn't straight, how to straighten your panorama before you stitch it. I can see here that the panorama is even, so I'm happy with that. Let's go over to the right hand side and you can see projection. Now projection means the perspective. So which perspective are you going to choose? And you can see we have cylindrical, transverse cylindrical, mechator, transverse mechator, spherical, transverse. Transverse just means the opposite way that it would normally stitch. Orthographic, fisheye, stereographic and perspective. Fisheye you would choose if you're using a fisheye lens to photograph your panorama. The most common one that I use is Mechator. Now this looks nice. Here I will show you why perspective is very important. And this is why I chose this image because you can clearly see choosing the wrong perspective really affects your panorama. So if we go to cylindrical up here, can you see how it's just stretched the clouds up the top? 
like you've pulled the rubber band you've just stretched all your images from let's say this much to this much and all the top clouds have been pulled and stretched it really doesn't look real and this is what I see on social media sometimes that people have just chosen the wrong perspective and the images look like that and I've never seen clouds just pull upwards it's like there's a magnet in heaven pulling all the clouds upwards now let's try spherical can you see how now this perspective has crunched it so the clouds have just been pushed down this is why I want to do this video I should have done this video a long time ago to show people that perspective that you choose when you're stitching a panorama greatly affects the outcome of a panorama we'll go back to Mechator and I want to show you what transverse means so remember I said it's just the opposite here we're clicking it can you see that it just pulls it all different ways so well I want fisheye where it just looks like a fishbowl we just go back to Mechator now we just click next it's going to blend it together now all we have to do is just crop our image we can tell Microsoft eyes to auto crop and it will just come in or we just say no crop and in post-processing if you want to add a little bit to the corners because there's so much arcing you can do that and this is what I normally do I don't crop while I'm doing the panorama I will crop it later I can just come like this on both edges like so and you can see that in the corners of this on both sides and on the bottom right there's just a little bit of empty space and I do it this way because I can open up Photoshop and just fill in where I have the gaps here we just click next and we just click file format tiff that's it I always leave it 100% and click export to disk and it will just drop it into that folder safe and here's the stitch panorama and once I've filled in the corners in Photoshop I re-import it into Adobe Lightroom and just finish it up this is the next daytime panorama taken in Brisbane City from South Bank and this is something that you have to remember when you're photographing a panorama when you're going to take a scene that the wider the image that you want the more issues you can have later on in post-processing because remember the earth is round so when you're stitching it will look like the panorama has got an arc stitching software is very good at removing that but sometimes it won't remove all the problems that you might have because your panorama is so wide and these are the images here they were taken with a Nikon 18 to 35 fx lens at 35 mil so I just go to import simple panorama click next now it's stitched all the images up something that you have to remember is that the way you shoot a panorama whether you're shooting on a tripod whether you're shooting handheld really affects how your panorama ends up this panorama was taken on a tripod with a panoramic rotator it looks straight here we'll just choose Mechator instead of cylindrical and if you've seen cylindrical it just pushes it up a bit and this one here doesn't have too much of a difference compared to the sunset at Lake Eden we'll go to Mechator if you look carefully in the, these images you can see that this building here on the right has got a lean and on the other side you can see that the other buildings on the left have got a lean also and they're both leaning opposite this is why I was saying earlier that you have to be careful the distance that you choose the wider that you're choosing because of the earth's curvature the more you're going to have a problem like this with PT GUI I have less of an issue because this program is built for professionals and it calculates the curvature of the earth Microsoft ICE tries to do it but it doesn't do as good of a job we can try to remove that as much as possible all we do is just use these arrows and just bend it down a bit there now we can see that it's close we just click next and now we'll stitch there that looks good I won't worry about saving this panorama this is a vertical panorama taken this year when we were at Katoomba on our New South Wales holiday I stitched this in vertical orientation there was 13 images here I start from the bottom and just kept tilting the camera up all taken handheld on this one with a Nikon 24 to 85 mil fx lens at 24 mil all the images there we click next if we choose Mechator look at it can you see that it's not one size fits all now if I go to cylindrical same thing look at it I just can't get it straight let's try traverse Mechator can you see that you've just got to 
play around and just choose which perspective, which projection best suits your panorama. When it comes to vertical handheld, what I'm doing is just I'm rotating the camera here. The nodal point is about here, but I'm not on the nodal point. So I'm going to get a different perspective. This is why you've got to choose the, the right perspective when you're stitching it. This looks quite good. Let's try another one. Orthographics, not right. Transverse spherical, that looks very similar to Traverse Mechator. That looks very good. If I click next, it's stitching it. Now all I have to do is just bring it in a little bit there and crop it, save it, and then do the final editing in Photoshop and in Adobe Lightroom. Although most of the time Mercator is very good, sometimes you've got to go and choose a different perspective. Now for some nighttime panorama. This panorama was taken in Tenerfield. We traveled to Tenerfield many times. The Milky Way is arcing over a farm. And this panorama was taken with the Tekina 11 to 16 millimeter DX lens at 13 mils. So we'll import the images, click next. This is why I included panoramas of the Milky Way because I want to show you what I see regularly on social media. And you might see this too. Look at the Milky Way. The top has been squashed down and look at all the stars at the, right at the top of the image. It's like they're splayed out on either way. This is because the person that has stitched this panorama hasn't used the proper perspective. This is on spherical. Let's choose cylindrical. It's just pointing up. Now let's go to Mercator. That looks very good. Because ultra wide angle lenses, you will have a bit of distortion in the edges. If I look to the top left or the top right, I can see that the stars are angling out, but that doesn't worry me because all of this will be cropped out. Now I'll choose next. When we trim it down, because we're only wanting the Milky Way, we don't see any problems at all. Don't be concerned when you're stitching that all the outer edges don't look right. Remember, it's the Milky Way that you want. You're shooting with an ultra wide angle lens. Your main concern is the Milky Way to make sure that the Milky Way looks like it should look. It shouldn't just be pointing up towards the heaven. Now I'm showing this vertical panorama because this one was taken with a DX lens. On a DX or on an FX lens, when you're using an ultra wide angle lens and you're stitching a panorama, you have to remember that you will have quite a bit of distortion on the edges of the frame. I tried to include a lot more images than just a third overlap. Most of the time I will have at least 50% overlap so that I don't have too much of that distortion when I'm stitching the panorama. There are seven images here. We're starting from the bottom at number one. And by the seventh image, you can see that the windmill is quite bent over. This is distortion. And this is why I want to show you that sometimes you have to use a different perspective, a different way to stitch your panorama. It's not one size fits all. There's our seven images. Click next. I'm using an ultra wide angle lens. As I'm going up, I'm going to get distortion. And look at the windmill here. Can you see that the windmill is just distorted? And then when I'm stitching it, I want to bring it back vertical to make it look like it is in real life. So the perspective that I choose is very important. And if I choose Megator, you can see that it doesn't look right. It has a curve, but this can be fixed by just pushing the images upwards and lining up my horizon. I've got heaps of stars on the top and I've got a major arc on each side, but it has stitched up quite well. If I cropped it here, it would look quite nice. Let's look at some other ways of stitching it. Let's try spherical. It's pushed down. Let's try orthographics. Again, we have issues. Let's try fisheye. Fisheye is normally meant for a fisheye lens. If I straighten out the, the horizon properly, the windmill still has a bit of a lean, but watch what happens when I move the image sideways. Can you see, because I've moved sideways, now the windmill is much straighter, but we have issues up the top here. Let's try stereographics. That looks fairly good. I would accept that because remember, it's all about the Milky Way. When I would go to crop the image, I just choose next here. Oh, I've made a mistake. Look at that. I've got so much curvature on the horizon here. Let's quickly go back straighten that horizon. That looks much better. My bad. If we go next, remember it's only about the Milky Way and this looks very similar to 
the way that I stitched it. This is the final panoramic image edited in Adobe Lightroom. Now these next two panoramas were taken quite a few years ago when I had my Nikon D750 and I was using a Sam Young 14mm ultra wide angle lens. Now this lens was very good but because it is such an ultra wide angle lens it has a lot of distortion on the edges. Sometimes when I'd stitch these panoramas they'd stitch great. Sometimes I would have a lot of hassle. So I want to show you that these two images both taken at 14 mils one stitched perfectly and the other one I had all sorts of issues with. This is the first panorama I've taken at Lake Somerset. I've got the Milky Way arcing over some trees. There were 16 images here taken of course at 14 mils. This panorama I've stitched beautifully but sometimes when I use this lens to photograph panoramas I just had all sorts of issues. Around 70-80% of the time panorama stitched beautifully and the rest of the time 20-25% to 25 of the time I had all sorts of issues. So we'll just go to Mechator. There, that looks very nice. We won't go past this because you can see that just choosing Mechator, the whole panorama stitched beautifully. And this is the last panorama that I'm going to show you today because I want to show you sometimes that no matter what you do, you will have problems stitching your panorama. Now this was taken in the scenic rim where I used to do astrophotography workshop and this old farmhouse here was over a hundred years old. Got the Milky Way arcing over the house and then joining up to a tree. I have 16 images here. I have quite a lot of overlap. I don't just have 30%, I have close to 50% overlap. So we've brought in all these images. Now we'll stitch it. And I chose these two to show you that even covering the same view, one worked out well, one didn't. There we go. It stitched it. If we go to Megator here, can you see how using Mercator on the first one, it's stitched beautifully. This one, it's pointing up to the sky. And if you look to the right here, there's images here. It's just way off to the side. It just doesn't look right. If we choose cylindrical, that's even worse. We tried traverse cylindrical, no good. Spherical isn't good. And the one that I had to choose for this image here was stereographic. And can you see the big issue here? The images haven't blended properly right above the Milky Way. I can try to straighten the horizon out, but look down the bottom here. It's just missing so much. What I wanted was the Milky Way. I end up cropping about the way that you see here. And in Photoshop, I just filled in where that hole was to make it look like this. Even though I had a lot of issues, I was able to fix those issues in post-processing. I really want to show you this one here to show you that sometimes even if you do everything right. This image here, the camera's on a tripod. I was using a panoramic rotator. Mother Nature threw a curveball in and I just couldn't stitch this image correctly. One, because I just tried to shoot so wide. If I hadn't decided to shoot so wide, I mightn't have had too much of a problem, but you just make do with what you have. So I hope you can see from this video that choosing the right perspective to stitch your image because every panorama will be different depending on the scene that you photograph. If this video has helped you understand perspective, how to stitch your panorama correctly, give this video a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your panoramic photography, and I will see you next time.